Today, we are going to look at a BodyViz brain builder about scoliosis and walk through a case study example. Scoliosis is an abnormal curvature of the spine, which can take the shape of an S or a C. Scoliosis is commonly diagnosed in adolescents, but it may also be diagnosed in adults. The vertebral column is comprised of vertebrae and connective tissue structures, such as intervertebral discs and associated ligaments. Vertebrae are labeled based on their location in the vertebral column. For example, the second cervical vertebra, known as the axis, is labeled C2, C for cervical, and the number 2 indicates its position. Similarly, the second lumbar vertebra is designated L2, and the tenth thoracic vertebra is labeled T10. To differentiate between cervical and coccygeal vertebrae, since both start with C, coccygeal vertebrae are labeled with CO, so the second coccygeal vertebra would be CO2. Let's create a cross-section on a real patient's skin using BodyViz to visualize the vertebral column. There are 24 presacral vertebrae, 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, and 5 lumbar. Two composite vertebrae are located in the pelvic region, five vertebrae are fused to form the sacrum, and three to five coccygeal vertebrae are fused to form the coccyx. The joints between adjacent vertebral bodies from C2 to S1 are classified as synthesis joints. Intervertebral discs, made of fibrous cartilage, are located between all vertebrae from C2 to S1. There is not a disc between C1 and C2, or between fused sacral and coccygeal vertebrae. Anteriorly, the vertebral column appears straight, but from a lateral view, it shows four curves, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. The thoracic and sacral curves are primary curves, present from fetal development, while the cervical and lumbar curves are secondary, or compensatory curves, developing later. These curves help align body weight with the center of gravity. Scoliosis and hyperkyphosis are common abnormal spinal curves. Scoliosis is a lateral curve, while hyperkyphosis is an excessive posterior curve in the thoracic region. Lordosis, a less common abnormality, is an exaggerated anterior curve in the lumbar region. There are several major types of scoliosis. Congenital scoliosis results from misshapen vertebrae during fetal development. This type often gets worse as the individual ages. Neuromuscular scoliosis develops in individuals with conditions such as cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, or spina bifida, due to an imbalance of muscular activity which impacts the spinal column. Idiopathic scoliosis has no known cause. It typically begins in adolescence, but if it develops before age 2, it is referred to as idiopathic infantile scoliosis. Adult degenerative scoliosis typically occurs after the age of 50. It is often the result of disease, work-related conditions, surgery, trauma, or degeneration of vertebrae from other causes. Common symptoms of scoliosis are an off-centered head, uneven shoulders or hips, asymmetry in the ribs, differences in how the arms hang when standing straight, back, neck, or limb pain, often with nerve involvement. Diagnosis is usually confirmed with an x-ray. CT and MRI scans may be needed in certain instances, such as congenital cases. In adolescence, the main goal of scoliosis treatment is to stop its progression and prevent deformity. The most common approach is to wait and watch the development with regular exams to monitor any changes. If the curve exceeds 20 degrees but stays under 50, a TLSO brace is typically prescribed to apply corrective pressure, a preventative measure. If the curve exceeds 50 degrees, surgery is often recommended. Minimally invasive procedures use small incisions to attach rods and screws to the spine, while more severe cases may require open surgery to insert larger rods. In adults, braces are largely ineffective and surgery is usually the only option to alleviate pain and prevent the curve from worsening. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 15. Sex, male. Chief complaints, uneven shoulders, lower back pain, and the patient's mother reported clothing not seeming to fit right. You invite the patient into your office for an examination. 
During the assessment, you observe that your patient's right shoulder is slightly higher than the left, and there is a visible lateral curvature of the spine when viewed from behind. An X-ray is performed and the Cobb angle, which measures the degree of spinal curvature, is calculated at 25 degrees, indicating moderate scoliosis. The Cobb angle is determined by measuring the most affected vertebra in the curve. For now, you and your patient and his family have decided that the best method is to wait and watch. You prescribe the patient to wear a TLSO brace for 16 to 18 hours a day. TLSO braces limit motion and apply corrective pressure to the vertebral column, which can prevent scoliosis from worsening. Regular checkups are scheduled every four to six months to monitor the curve as he continues to grow. This has been a classic example of scoliosis. Thank you for watching this Brain Builder video. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you are new to BodyViz, check out our other anatomy resources and schedule a demo today at bodyviz.com.